Welcome to the Comedy Slab. I'm Adrian Lacey in the southeast of England. We are socially isolated, me and he. He is Shane O'Connor, 170 miles away. I think I probably won't catch anything <laughs> from him at that distance <laughs> other than the odd laughter and the odd line, which we hope will be mildly, moderately witty. We can ask no more. So he's up in the Midlands. I'm down here. If you're in Scotland, we're both down there. Uh, or if you're in Iceland or anywhere north of us. It's all relative, isn't it? Now, I was really flattered. You'll love this, Shane. Mm. Uh, I was really flattered uh, the other day by my girlfriend, which doesn't happen that often, so, to be honest. Sorry, you, you, you were nearly flattened by your girlfriend, did you say? <laughs> that's that's the more normal state of affairs. Bedtime. Go on. But there, I'm lying there in my Winsiette pyjamas mm. with Paisley pattern. Oh, don't. Stop it. Go on. Are you getting the picture? Oh, You're getting overexcited, she wants aren't to you? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said to her. <laughs> Uh, she said, I've got enough of your seeds already, thank you. Shane, have you got any um, plums? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Don't upstage me, because it's not that funny. But anyway, she said to me, looking at my pyjamas, first time these particular pyjamas had been worn, in her view, she said, uh, oh, it's like being in bed with Eric Morecambe. I can't tell you how I was flattered. <laughs> I, thought I you think was, it was meant to flatter I thought you were going to say, she pointed to the crotch area of my pyjamas and went, is that where you hang out? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise you wrote for Julian Clary. Well, I, well, no, do you know what? It was, I used to work with a, a Welsh guy called Heffin Thomas. Where's, the, where's that Heffin Thomas that, gone? Is that a name? Or no, a... it's an expletive. Okay. And uh, he always he had a habit of whenever, if you're in the gents, he'd come bursting. He was a very, a very big man, a really nice guy. Very big man, very rotund. Really big in the gentleman's department. I have no idea, but you've been there, you'd be quietly having a wee. And uh, he'd burst into the <laughs> toilet and he'd say... <laughs> like a torrent. Is he, Hello, he said, is this where the big knobs hang out then? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, we could get on to celebrity comparisons, uh, people I have weed next to. <laughs> Cliff Richard's my favourite. Um Oh, the most famous. Did you hear that car go past, by the way? i just got to mention. I'm... No, I didn't. You're in, we should say you're in temporary accommodation <laughs> for the next five to ten years, yeah, I think. I think so, yeah. Uh, it's a long story, basically. I'm knocking my house down and uh, we're living in the caravan. I know. Okay. Um, please. That's good enough for me. Done all the but, well, people will know the backstory if they've been listening for some time. But the, the long and the short of it is, um, if either a vehicle goes past, <laughs> you might hear it. And if it rains, God help us all. That's all I'm saying. Right. Um, it's Can't you put some, um, I don't know, some soft tarpaulin on the roof or something to soften the blow of the, the rain? Yeah, I've got, I'm, I was only sitting there today thinking, oh, I've got nothing to do. Why don't I put some soft tarpaulin <laughs> on the roof for Adrian? <laughs> You're only caring for two under five. But you know. I mean, it's not like that's remotely demanding. Um, it's not a proper job, no. is it? Like going to an office and no. pushing a pen. No, it's more of a lady's job, isn't it? You know. <laughs> That's, that's where you're coming from. I wasn't going to say it, but I'm so glad you Yeah, I, was, I could tell that's where you were going with that one, but there you go. So. You can answer the correspondence. <laughs> you remind me, actually, of the, I was trying not to mention Alan Partridge, but um, Alan Partridge's podcast, where does it come from? The Oast House. Exactly. <laughs> Alan Partridge. From the caravan. From the so exactly, yeah, Shane O'Connor. It's the same number of syllables as well. I rehearsed it earlier. <laughs> Shane O'Connor from the caravan. <laughs> Oh, it went up Come on, it's got to be a series. Give me a nice. second series. I can see why you're in demand in the choir. <laughs> <laughs> they was demanding me to leave. Yes. <laughs> anyway, what is the Comedy Slab? If you're brand new to the show, welcome along. Either way, whether you're new or old or sort of middle-aged, uh, we put a different comedy on the notional slab of shame, or is it slab of fame each week? Prod it about a bit. Stick in the scalpel, and that's not a euphemism, madam. And we uh, see who salutes and see what we make of it, uh, whether it's TV, radio or internet. Uh, this week it's a BBC Radio 4 show, also available on BBC Sounds, certainly in the UK. It's called Conversations from a Long Marriage. Uh, I think working with you for these number of years, Shane, made me think of this as an obvious one to put on the slab. It's awesome. Careful. Yeah. It is, it is. It's, you talk about life imitating art or art imitating life. It's seeing your own reflection or hearing it. Um, anyway, we're going to get to that in a little while, see what we make of it. Uh, for your information, it's Series 3, Episode 1. 
as we speak, it's nearly the most recent edition to go out. But between now and uh, getting started on the dissection of said show, um, we're going to have some comedy news as we do each week. And um, I just sliced you this. I gave you only about half an hour to look at it, but um, knowing the rate you speed read at, hopefully that's enough. Uh, the shock headline, I'm just talking it up. Ellie Taylor, uh, for tis she, a comedienne par excellence. You might know her from um, Would I Lie to You, I think. Um, she's uh, just landed two new Channel 4 shows. This is coming from the British Comedy Guide, which you'll find at uh, comedy.co.uk. Well, first of all, were you familiar with Ellie Taylor, mm. Shaney? No, not at all. <clears throat> um, which, And I never had the time to do it. I thought, shall I make a cup of coffee or shall I research who Ellie Taylor is. <laughs> Let me guess which one won out. This cappuccino is lovely. That's all I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you very She's much, lovely too, before uh, you get into hot water. I've, I've never seen you her in into your cappuccino. But then you know I'm not a big fan of the of the panel genre um, no. comedically. So um, I would kind of um, steer clear of... I mean, I'm guessing, is that all she's done? Or do you have you done any of her other work? No, I, I'm sure she, she's... Uh, no, she's uh, much more of an all-rounder than that. Um mm. Uh, talented stand-up, I believe, and a writer stroke actor. In fact, I think there was a reference further down this article to um, uh, an American project. Did you see that? Can't find it now, of course. Oh, and she's also published her first book, so she's an author as well. So, yeah, oh, and a mother, and the book is, to some extent, it seems, from the title okay. uh, about that. So, um, yeah, more, more than just a panellist, I would say me and I, and I don't know what, which angle you're going to come at this from but the thing that struck me first of all is that are we that devoid of talent in this country now that we have to hand out um commissions to people two at a time <laughs> yeah i suppose we could spread it around uh, a bit more well, i think we should um, shouldn't we not we could hmm. we should i mean it's it's a given you shouldn't you shouldn't be going around handing two shows you know, one, one broadcaster shouldn't be handing two shows to anybody, no matter how good they are. You should say, right, okay, go and do that, and then come back and come and do something else. And You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, yeah, it, it smacks of desperation, really. Is it? Is it to tick a box, is it? Because they want, they've got so many female comedians. Well, I think you're racing ahead of, uh, of what we know. Um, well, can, considering look, you or I don't really know her work, you could hardly say Yeah, but that how do you get to know so someone popular, other than... Well... No, but um, I, I think it's a fair bet her star is in the ascendant. These things build on each other. Uh, in her defence, I don't know the full story any more than you do, but you're making certain assumptions. You're making it sound like the assumptions are bad. But, I mean... Well, they're, they're not as generous as I might make because I am, of course, a morally superior person to you, as everyone who listens for any length of time will know. Give me a good but reason. Let, let, me just put, let me just put the case, which is that she'll be having conversations all the time as any uh, actor, any busy, uh, enviably uh, busy actor will be, a comedian. Mm. Uh, and you, you won't just say, oh, I'm only going to take one phone call at a time. In fact, at one stage, for instance, I had two jobs I was applying for at the BBC. And I, I asked uh, a mate's mum uh, whether I was overdoing it and whether that was immoral or silly or would I get, a, get caught out. She said, well, an organisation that size, probably worse than the fact the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. How she knew the BBC that well, uh, not having worked for it, I'll never know. But um, I did go ahead ahead and uh, apply for both jobs, and I got one of them and didn't get the other one and uh, was never found out. So, But, but if you'd but, have, got, but they if you'd have could been have given both, both of up. them, you wouldn't have been able to fulfil both of them. That's the difference, isn't it? Well, yeah, but that's the difference between being a freelance and, you know, having the whole structure, infrastructure of agents and production companies and so on. Uh, I'm sure they would work around each other's diaries. They have to. I, all I'm saying to you is I can't think of a good reason, and nothing against her, I don't know her, but I can't mm. think of a good reason why you would want to offer talent um, who is not established, essentially, as well, um, two shows at, uh, at once. And, and that's the only thing I can think of, to be honest with you. I can't think of any other good reason why you would go, oh, I'll tell you what, we'll give her, we'll give her two shows. It, it, just, it just seems ridiculous. It's the same broadcaster, isn't it? So, Well, tell us about the two shows then, Mr Shane. Well, the one, <laughs> the one is, is basically Could I Lie to You on Channel 4? I mean, mm. Harry Hill used to do this on, on TV Burp all the while, didn't he? And he'd say, oh, there's a new programme called Blah, Blah, Blah. He said, I know what you're thinking. It sounds like <laughs> so-and-so. He said, 
And then he looks, he looks at the side camera and goes, <laughs> that's because it is. <laughs> it's just the same thing. So there's one like, would I lie to you version? And there's mm. another one, which is, I mean, take your pick because there's so many dating programs on. It's supposed to be a new spin on a dating show, isn't it? Which, um, where they have to, it's called Let's Make a Love Scene. And they have to, um, uh, recreate romantic movie sequences. I'm, I'm guessing when Harry met Sally, uh, in the diner with Professor Plum's <laughs> plumbing, um, will probably professor, feature. It's Professor Plum though. <laughs> 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 Back to your favourite topic, old fruit. So you, you um, do fancy either of these two, then, do you? Which one? Which is the no? One? But I tell you what. I tell you what. Imagine yeah. my surprise. There is people should read this article. Please read this article. Don't listen to the Shainster. Don't let him put you off. <laughs> Comedy.co.uk. You find it in the news sections. But as part of the article, very handily, there is a clip of Ellie Taylor on. Would I lie to you? Yeah. And imagine my surprise when I actually LOL'd. I laughed out loud. I enjoyed it. I don't... Look, I'm like you. I don't normally um, watch panel shows. Life too short. I could just hear hear the ticking of the mortality clock very loudly in my ear when I'm, you know, watching a show when I should be writing or mm. something like that. But it was actually very funny. These are very experienced comedians... I thought, did you see that clip or did you just cross your arms and no, imagine it? No, I, I mean, I think I've said this to you before. I can't, I, I know I've certainly said it to Angelina. I, I get you confused my wife a lot of the time, but I, I've <laughs> fortunately... It's very embarrassing where I'm wearing my Winsiet pyjama. <laughs> I was going to say, fortunately, not where it counts. So that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's a good thing for everybody. Well, um, for that, we must all be grateful. I've done, I've done this myself. I've looked on Facebook. Uh, when I've scrolled through Facebook, videos come up and I've like clicked on and had a look at it. And they inst- mm. and I think the problem, Adrian, is with these, his volume, it's just the sheer... You just need to turn it up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should just get one of those little hearing aids from the spec savers, who knows. But, um, mm. yeah, it, it's the, just the sheer amount that they make. It's just a bit... I find it a bit overwhelming. And I also oh, think... Yeah, yeah. That a whole program of it is a little bit too much for me as well. But, but you're you right. Fun- it- you fudged my question, so you haven't watched this. I didn't watch that clip, clip no. But I, no. I do find it funny, and I have laughed out loud at uh, at um, clips. But that's enough for me. I think is it's fair to say. Anyway, so uh, I think we've done that to death, and uh, it's time to move into the major part of the show, which is actually putting conversations from a long marriage from Radio 4 stroke uh, BBC Sounds, putting that on the uh, comedy slab. Now, people, eagle-eared listeners last week, Shane, as I set you the homework, will have spotted, as I did, uh, I'm guessing you don't get overexcited about Joanna Lumley being Joanna Lumley on a show. No, I mean, there's the... Ooh, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because there's nothing... I I... I hold no grudge against her, um, but I do kind of feel a little bit like, um, where's my change, when you know exactly the kind of person, the kind of voice, the kind of look if it's on TV that mm. you're going to get from her. And, and you know, there, there are actors and actresses knocking their guts out trying to you know do accents and change their look and walk with a limp and have a hump and i mean yeah they're wasting their time on radio frankly but um on their back to them i mean by the way having a hump i didn't mean (laughs) (laughs) stop it back to your favorite topic of plums so Um, but you know i just kind of yeah but but maybe it's the art that conceals art she makes it look easy but actually you try reading a script like that and bringing it to life. She makes it look easy, but you try being yourself for 27 minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, well, look, she's had a career out of it. She's obviously popular enough with enough people. And uh, also, um, I don't think she'll mind me saying she, I don't think she's quite in the first flush of youth. I think it's great for an older woman, older bloke, to... Uh, to be doing a, a, a show and making a, a success of it such that they're in their third series. I, I see. I couldn't care less about any of that. I, a man, woman, young, old, straight, gay, black, white. Uh, I can't think of any other opposites now. So I'll, I'll uh, Protestant, short, tall. Catholic. Yeah. You and me. No, no, I don't want any Catholics on the show. No. <laughs> um, 
Can um, I just point out that's what you are? I, I'm um, just I'm just a pro good. Uh, that's what I like. I like good. Pro but, good. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's what that's, everyone says. I don't care anything uh, else outside of that. Are you good? <laughs> yes. You're not? No. Bye bye. <laughs> Okay, well, that really sums up the comedy slab. We, we could have done that and got away with one episode. It's like this, though. It is like the comedy slab, isn't it? You know, I talk with this, you know, I'll put this accent on, the Birmingham thing and all the rest of it. I mean, nobody's ever tweaked the fact that I'm the fifth Duke of Wilmslow. <laughs> and, and, and I I'm went the to the 12th Earl of Wimbledon. Do you know what I mean? Um, oh, I yeah, know. it's such a performance, but then working with you always has been. <laughs> Okay, you old curmudgeon. I think you might just recognise uh, something in the Roger Allen character. Just saying. Um, so, conversations from a long marriage. Is that sort of a half reference to? Uh, I should. I should have seen this film. I never have. Is it scenes from a marriage, uh, which is a classic from the seventies. It's more serious drama, but it is about. Well, it's a marriage in crisis, isn't it? But a long, long marriage. Who's it by? One of those arty farty film directors. I don't know. I, 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 uh, no. Frederico not, Fellini? I don't know. Uh, no. Bernardo no, no, Bertolucci? I, I think, I think, you know, try, try someone French. Sorry, I bought a pizza earlier and it's just uh, tripping on me. <laughs> 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 uh, I, thought, I thought it was more Hasta la Pasta. Yes, but, baby. Um, anyway, uh, Truffaut or someone like that. One, one of the oh, truffles. Grandis, oh, can we yeah, get truffle? <laughs> I think we can. <laughs> okay. Get a truffle pig first. Yes. So, uh, yes, what do you need to know? Um, I want to really... I'm terrible with character names. I'm terrible with actor names. And uh, I can barely remember Sean's name. Oh, it's Shane, isn't it? Damn. <laughs> Keep trying to get that right after all these years. Um, I'm trying to find the character names. Do you know them to help me out? Uh, is it Sid and Nancy? <laughs> yes, it certainly is. <laughs> Pretty in Pink is the name of this particular movie. Um <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, does it matter? Anyway, according to you, Joanna Lumley is playing Joanna Lumley, so we might as well call her character Joanna Lumley for now, till I can find out the true name. Um, Roger Allen, I can just listen to him. I'm not going to say read the phone book because no one has a phone book these days. I could, I could hear him read Google um, for the rest of time because I think it would take quite a while now. Um, just love his voice. Um, Anyway, so as the name of the show implies, they have been married a long time. And what I like about it is it's the way it veers between, and I've got a hunch Shane may not come with me on this particular journey, but we'll see. Uh, it veers between that sort of tetchiness that long-term couples have. What do you mean, tetchy? <laughs> and, and a tenderness that says, oh, right, this is why they're still together after all this time. Not many couples that I know of have managed it my sister bless her has managed it and i'm not just saying that because she doesn't listen to me she won't be listening to this but uh, uh you know i can only name now we're not going to name names but three couples who really you think oh they're going to last the course so let's get into the first of two audio clips uh i've taken a leaf out of uh, shane's book much though i love dissing him i also love copying him every now and again and his thing as you may have noticed if you've listened to more than one a comedy slab is to take the first clip from very close to the top of the show because it, it it's lazy actually frank frank frankly shane isn't it or <laughs> shane lee frank um it's because it sets the scene and you don't have to so i'm going to let some of this do the talking i really don't think he suspects anything but oh yes i know no no we must be very careful darling still not much longer and then we can <clears throat> we... <clears throat> thank you for calling bye how long have you been listening to me 40 years give or take who are you talking to nobody is that your final answer yes you don't want to phone a friend? Uh, oh, you just have. Or did he phone you? Who said it was a he? Was it? It's just a wrong number. It sounded like a friend. A very good friend. Intimate, even. People get embarrassed when they misdial. I was just putting him at his ease. So you said, we must be very careful, darling. No, I said, we must be very careful, dialing. Ha! Nobody dials anymore, we just press buttons. Maybe, but if we make a mistake, we always say, I must have dialed a wrong number, don't we? What an accomplished liar you are. You think? Here's what I think. Either you're having an affair, or you're planning a surprise birthday party for me. OK, I confess, I'm having an affair. Thank God for that. Really? Of the two, that's definitely the preferable option. 
That's a good idea doing that clip thing. I wish I'd thought. Oh, I did think of that. Well, <laughs> um, tetchy, can, tetchy. Before I give you a headline, can I yeah. can I just say how much I enjoyed last week's Comedy Slap podcast? Because it was my turn to edit it, and, I, and I, it was lovely. I really enjoyed oh, it. Are you blowing smoke up your own ventilator? Just saying is all. Just saying. Uh, my headline to this... Oh, it, dear. Be is, afraid. Be very afraid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is a long night with an even longer marriage. Okay, I can't pretend to be shocked, uh, as I suspect neither are regular listeners. But do you believe me, darling, if I say I didn't actually select this as punishment for you? Yes, I do. And Good. I'm I'm more intrigued. As, as the time went on with this, listening to it, I mean, I don't even know where to begin. With this, At the beginning, to be, to be honest with you, well, why not? It worked for Under Milk Wood and Dylan Thomas. It's a very good place to start. To start. Um, I, I, I am more intrigued as to what you think of this. <laughs> and, and I was thinking that as I was as I was listening to. It. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, two times I listened to it, mm. and I kind of went in and out of consciousness. <laughs> so. so well, that worked. I tried to knock you out. Knock yourself out. Um, what do I make of it? i tell you what, I will confess, and I don't know whether you discerned this or whether I perhaps gave it away last week or perhaps uh, in a throwaway comment on a previous week. I, I do wear my writerly hat a bit. Spoiler alert for those not familiar, I'm working on my first novel. No one could accuse me of rushing it. I started it in about 1998. But I've nearly finished the first draft. So, um, You've nearly finished colouring it in, haven't you now? So. I've nearly finished my life, really. But uh, anyway, yeah, colouring it. <laughs> Cheeky. Um, I thought it was a play what you wrote, but it turned out it was a book. But go Well, on. it could become a play. Careful what you wish for okay. or don't wish for. But anyway, so what I really admire is the fact it's just the two voices. Um that might be the very thing that made it feel like a long night for you, but uh, and I and I for once I don't think they're doing it just to be cheap, cheap as chips, cheap and cheerful radio. I genuinely think it um, it stands up. You've got the strength of the performances. Again, Shane's not necessarily going to agree with this, but um, you know, two two stalwarts um, plus the writer Jan Etherington, who I need to research more. Never quite got round to that, but I think this is her first uh, um, solo uh, piece for radio. Hmm. But anyway, um, it, it's a tough gig. I mean, it's easy easy to see what. Uh, might irk you about it and sometimes the, the, those same things irk me about it just like being in a long marriage uh, can irk you but um, at the same time if you think you've got to create everything you've got to create this whole world in a conversation between two people even the conversation on the phone you don't hear the other end of the phone the most you get because it's birthday blues you hear a group of people, I don't want to give too much away, uh, singing uh, Happy Birthday, and uh, the odd, which we don't, not elephant, but um, <laughs> we worked out, didn't we? We don't know the name of one of those things, that do we? The, that was the elephant in the room, wasn't it, that one? Yeah. <laughs> it was. Um, no, those those little blower things that you have for parties. Yeah, party, we, we didn't those. know then, and we still don't know, no. but whatever they are, no. we, know, we know what they sound like. And... Um, uh, but that's all you've got other than the two voices. I mean, precious few sound effects on any other editions. And I have, uh, unusually for me, heard more than one edition. You might get sort of, if they're in the car, you get some background car effects, but nothing more than that. And so the whole weight of, and I'm going to use the D word drama because it's there as well as the comedy. Um, the whole weight of the drama has to be in two voices and, just a conversation. I think that itself is, I'm going to use the word admirable, which might not be too exciting and sexy, but hey, mm. I still find it admirable. And do you know what the, and you've eloquently illustrated it, and I think unwittingly illustrated my point and exactly what I was going to say. You know, the, the real problem is, and the trap that writers always fall into, mm. is that it was like a, a rat-a-tat-tat conversation, like a tennis match conversation. It was bang, back, forth, bang, mm. back, forth. Nobody 
talks like that. Now, you've just talked for, what, a minute and a half, two <laughs> minutes there. Seriously. It feels longer, I know. And, and now I'm talking for, you know, a, a minute or whatever. Mm. And that's how people have conversations. You listen to what they, but there was there was no time for them to think. There was no time for this. And f- and for somebody, this is why I said I was intrigued as what you think of it. Because for somebody who says regularly, you say about the realism mm. of, of a of a thing, you know, and, and whether whether it has a kind of um, a gravitas to it, or or whether there's a there's a, a sort of you know a touchstone of of real life in there. That was the thing that just like did my noggin in throughout the whole thing was it was just like nobody talks like that nobody talks like that nobody sits there and goes so do you want to do this yes i do Do-do-do. and the other thing is as well after 40 mm. years of marriage of the people that you know that have stuck the course how often do they have protracted conversations like this where they're trying to impress each other with their own wit and eloquence and it, it, to me, it just missed on everything, missed on every single keynote of, of where you should be with these kind of things. You know, we you should have um, the reality of it. You've got no time to breathe. This is the second thing I've heard Roger Allen mean, where there's no time for him to breathe at all. It was just rat-a-tat-tat all the while. Didn't that, didn't that get to you at all? I, I guess I forgave it, but have you ever actually... Um, you, you possibly haven't had the Once need to I do it, like it. because <laughs> all the time. Very, very sticky. <laughs> That's squashed plums for you. Yes. Um, I, because of the writing I'm doing, one of the exercises I've done more than once, uh, mm. you know, with twenty years apart, is actually transcribe quotes, real conversation. Actually, not in quotes. I mean real conversation. Like, I, um, before the days of being able to record on a phone, I think I was just taking notes the first time through, which is hard when you can't do shorthand. Mm. But more recently, I recorded a conversation. Uh, I probably should have said I'm, I'm recording this for training purposes, but I didn't tell them. Uh, and this guy repeated the same tedious thing three times. This is a conversation at the next table on the train I was on. Um, so if you want realism... It's utterly tedious. Um, Alan Bennett says, you know, you, you can't really go for realism because people are talking about having cups of tea most of the time. But strange enough, that's what I think Alan Bennett plays uh, often do. But, but you know, there's a genre called kitchen sink drama and that's actually talking about cups of tea is all right in that genre. Um, so I forgave it. And, and to me, it's, I, I, I hear it as a theatrical thing. So... Yeah, I do. I do cut it some slack. I'm not demanding. I'm not demanding realism from this because you've got to paint all the pictures. Um, you know, for instance, the other week they they introduced something. She told him um, a, a, a secret from before they started going out, and you think, well, you've been together for forty years. Would you really keep that secret? But you know, if you start making rules about that, oh, they're not allowed to reveal anything they don't already know. Then you really haven't got anything worthy of the name, and I, I would call it a comedy drama. Do you know the other thing that really hurt me as well is that it's always posh people. It's always posh, white, metropolitan people in these things. Always. You know, you, you'd... Yeah, but if it, if it wasn't them, you'd say it wasn't one of these things. You'd say it was a different genre, wouldn't you? My point is that there are... There mm. are just, like, who the hell's... The two questions that stuck in my mind, who's casting this... And who's commissioning it for a th- third series? You kind of think, is this, you know, I mean, two series of this, and you, you I mean, one series, one episode. No, all right, one series. <laughs> one, scene. You, one, one scene. One scene, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's you, so You would have gone click after the the opening line when you realised it was Joanna Lumley, what's, which what, I think is unfair. No, I don't. What's the um, What's the um, thing that Roger Allen does on the TV? The, the, um, the, the he's a... Um, um, Didn't we talk about it the detective. other Detective, yeah. I can't remember what the detective programme is that he does. I'll look it up in a sec. But I watch him in that, and I think, he's like a different bloke from this because he's got nowhere to move. There's, do you know the other thing? There's no over-talking. There's, mm. there's no... There's the, like everything is so business like matter-of-fact. I'm going to say this and you're going to say that. Blah, blah, blah. There's, there is no <sighs> breathing, relaxed, 
take it easy. And it's interesting that they, they interspersed it with these little clips of music, which mm. again were painfully obvious when they were talking about a bicycle. So they played Queen Bicycle Race. It was that kind of um, local radio um, <coughs> musical alliteration. Um, and uh, you, to me, that kind of said the producer was listening to it and thinking, God, this is dry. This is, this is, this is do people's nutting. Stick a bit of music in for 15 <laughs> seconds. Seriously, do you know what I mean? It's like, well, you're in a mode to f- find fault. I thought the music uh, provided a little punctuation. I'm not. You can shake your head at me, uh, young man, I, on Skype. You I love the way that if I, don't, if, if I don't, if I, if I have a qualm with something, that you go, oh, just ignore him. He's in a bad mood. It's like, <laughs> no, but, yeah, but you've been in a bad mood at least since 2007 yeah. when I first met you. Yeah. It was, fair I, enough, I, haven't, it was I haven't seen the clouds clear. 1983 was when I was last oh, up, right. I think, yeah. No, but seriously, I, this is, you know, I'm not... Was I'm that not, when Kajagoogoo were in the top slot? <laughs> yes, <laughs> certainly <laughs> was. Um, but I just, I just, th- I mean, it's so frustrating, uh, you know, more than... I'm not, I'm not angry because I'll never hear another episode again. You know, I'll make it my life's work. So right, but, you won't. Yeah, I, I'm just so. I, d- I don't think uh, regular listeners would be too shocked by that. I just thought you might find something redeeming in it, which uh, I'm not hearing. Did you? I think it, the only question is. Here we go. Yes. Um, let me ask you a question. Here's then. one. Here's one. Here's one for you. Here's one. What do you think it is? They've been yeah. married for forty odd years, right? Mm. Did, Did you, you say get years? years? I think Joanna Lumley's bringing you, you know, up the social scale. But carry on. They, they've been married for forty years. Yars, and yars. Did you get any sense of warmth between the pair of them? They were like yes. two disparate, well, separate let individuals us to me. Answer that with our second and final audio clip. You'll Go be on, glad it's you. the final one. I dare you. Uh, because <laughs> I thought I, m- I mustn't just play, uh, folks, the um, the tetchy side of the relationship, which is what, of course, we heard in the first uh, section. So this one, I, I just played it out. I kept recording until I heard a, a, a more tender section. It's, and that's what we hear here. Here, here. So uh, she has bought him a bike, blah, 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 for his birthday. And he wants to trim up and all kinds of things like that. I think I'll let them tell the rest of the story. I know this bike very well. So do I. You don't? I do. You really don't. I flaming well do. I've ridden it quite a bit. When? When you've been out doing stuff. You've been practising secretly? No, I've been openly cycling round the neighbourhood, waving and chatting. While I wasn't around? Oh, yes, most definitely. Why? So I could avoid exactly what's happening now, which is you telling me what to do. All right, go then. I'll leave when I'm ready. You should get some leggings. Go away. Have you got cycle clips? Go further away. Better pop your cycling proficiency certificate in your back pocket in case you get stopped by a policeman. (laughs) Have you finished? Can you get some bread while you're out? No. And bananas? Absolutely not. But you've got panniers. This is not a shopping expedition. What is it then, a joyride? It will be if you leave me alone. Can I help you get your leg over? (laughs) You used to laugh at my jokes. You used to be funnier. Wait! Slow down. I'm trying to get away from you. Mm, Bit wobbly. Take your hand off my saddle. I'm your pace setter. Don't you dare run uh, alongside me. Then I'll wave you off like the Tour de France. Allez-vous en! Oh, hello, Vera. It's his new bike. I'm helping him get the hang of it. Yes, that sounds like they're in the corner of a studio, doesn't it? it does, I mean, <laughs> I know? thought you'd at least crack a smile for Allo Vera. <laughs> Wasted no. on you. Wasted. I, I just, I just, oh man, it was just, there is no. There's no chemistry there at all. There's nothing that makes me believe for one minute that they are a couple. Um, I don't. Know. It was Endeavour, by the way. I was trying to think of that he was in, uh, right. where he plays uh, DCI Fred Thursday, and I don't know what he does the rest of the week. But... <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. That, uh, that joke was very weak. Seven oh, days off. Oh, very yeah, good. Yeah, so I did. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's not let the. Um, the pain go on for too much longer um so you would listen if you had people that you could identify with perhaps a bit more well a lot more and if it was oh you do like naturalism don't you but i i would argue there's more to life than just being naturalistic you you did associate me with it a bit earlier in the show 
But uh, even I have to admit, there are different styles of comedy and drama, and they're not all the same thing, and we'd be bored if they were. So this is of the genre that's quite slick, slick, witty. You've just got to suspend disbelief long enough, but you clearly couldn't. And, uh, slick wasn't... It was relentless, not slick. I mean, there's a difference between the two, and I think slick and polished is one thing, but... Um, relentless but it's just relentless it was just just carried on and on and i just thought oh man i can't it, it's just on so many levels it just didn't work for me and it, and it's it's a like i say tragedy because it's almost as like you know somebody had written it and then and then if you'd written that you'd get you go guys this isn't working it just you're just you're just ping-ponging back from one another and it's just it just doesn't sound it doesn't there's no chemistry doesn't gel you know you, you, the point at rehearsals you'd have gone oh come on i'm gonna to have to rewrite this it's just it, it, people don't talk like that you know what i mean it's like it's like if somebody did a play and they went i'm going to talk like that all the way through it and then you go yeah but that's a that's a different genre that's um uh, robot play or whatever you know what i mean it's like it's ridiculous it's right so putting you out of your misery i think the only question now is will you give it above zero I'm, I'm hoping you will, but uh, I think it's going to be a positive in integer, but it will be below two. Mm. I think you're right. <laughs> Not yeah. very positive, actually. I, I'm, I'll give it. I'll give it one because I'm generous. Generous, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, honestly, I, you're I, all I, heart. You are. I, do, you know, I, I can't, and I hate, I hate this, and I, mean, I hate, I, I hated listening to it because it's just so frustrating. Um, not because I'm hating on it or I'm hating on the writer or the cast or anything like that, but I just, I just, it's so frustrating because, you know, conceptually, uh, it's a great idea, but it's just like, it just didn't, it, I didn't think it was done the right way. Yeah, I'll give it a one. They all turned up and they put the electric on, so I'll give them a one for, <laughs> for that. the electric on. You know, I, uh, oh, well. It was an electric bike as well, wasn't it? Um, Right, well, I've got good news for you because you like the writing so much that um, <laughs> Jan Etherington is married to uh, a writer, Gavin Petrie, or Petrie, and um, I'm going to put it on the slab in future weeks, the ITV's Duck Patrol, written by them, um, <laughs> which was so good that uh, it got axed after seven episodes in 1998, and I don't think it's coming back anytime soon. Well, look... Um can I, I yes. think you're going to say then, I said, well, I've got some news for you. Jan Etherington, who wrote this, is on the podcast this evening. <laughs> yes, she's next to me here. Um, well, look, it's, uh, it's not to your personal taste, but I can, I, I just, I just buy it for being what it is. Uh, it obviously doesn't work for you. I, you know, every now and again, I do like uh, slick, witted, uh, slightly unreal um, dialogue and it and it and it works for me. And yet, but, I give you a whole know, episode of people in bloody space, and you, you're not interested at all. Are you? I mean, I don't know what to do with you, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> are, are you thinking of the Armando Iannucci thing? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I came round to that actually. So uh, it's a one from you. I think I've got to give it a four now, haven't I? Having defended it so hard, um, but uh, no, I'm comfortable with that because um, yeah. I, I think I, I've, I've said it all. I think it's nice to have uh, a bit of variety, and this is quite different from uh, a lot of stuff we've uh, put on the slab. And I've listened to more than one episode, so there's a recommendation from a Unitarian like me. Right. Shocking. I think you're going to say I'll give it 11 or something like that. <laughs> but uh, so it's 12 out of 10 for conversations from <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it does make the halfway line, doesn't it, anyway? So five five out of ten for conversations from a long marriage. And if you do enjoy it, then, uh, my God, you need to have a good, long, hard look at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> In the mirror. I would love it now if you said, next week, Duck Patrol. Yeah. <laughs> I, ITV's forgotten classic. Well, I'm going to go better than that. Well, I think I am anyway. Because What could possibly be better than Duck Patrol from well, ITV? Oh, that was, uh, it was a BBC production, wasn't it, I think? Was it uh, for... Um, Oh, yeah, thank you. BBC Studios. Get get your subdivisions correct. Is it Studios for radio? It's a wholly just... owned subsidiary, yeah. They didn't used TV. to be. BBC Studios was TV first, but now it's radio as well. Who, who would know? Who would know? Anyway, <laughs> um, so next week then, I'm going to take you to a pirate radio station broadcasting UK Garage from a flat in Brentford. 
and let's see how many middle class white people we've got in that. <laughs> now, tell me you're joking. I'm not. That's exactly not. what. No. Brentford. Well, I, for a moment, I thought it was going to be your friend Lenny Henry, but then I thought that's slightly unlikely, and that would be Brixton rather than Brentford. But mm. it both begin with uh, BR and both London um, areas. Brentford Nylons, in, no less. Well, don't knock it. Alan De- Freeman, not Deptford off. Brentford Nylons. Right. So. Um, <laughs> 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 um, so, yeah. Uh, yes. A pirate radio station in uh brentford well mm. it's like a, a they're broadcasting from a flat do, do you know this at all now corrupt i FM, feel sure I, I should sorry say it again the, the radio station is called corrupt fm the program corrupt FM. is called people do nothing oh uh i do know i guess how many episodes i've watched <laughs> oh seven <laughs> Just take away six. Okay. Um, now, why is it I can't remember the radio station? I don't think it's simply about the radio station. That's what's wrong-footed me. Yeah, that's that's part of it, isn't it? I think that's mm. that's what they do, but that's that's the kind of hub for it. I think is the best way to describe it. I've I've not seen a whole episode of this actually, so we're kind of both leaping off into the dark together. But I thought, just for a change, uh, series two, episode one, entitled "The Godfather," is the episode that we're going to look at. Okay. Uh, so that's People Do Nothing, Series 2, Episode 1, The Godfather, is the homework for next week. We are at Comedy Slab, naturally enough, on Twitter, and also that's the handle at Comedy Slab for our Facebook page. Do please like the latter, follow us on the former, or you could swap the two around and see where you get with that, but I think you might get an electronic glitch, uh, not to say uh, electrical shock, if you try it back to front. Um Personal recommendations to friends and family, imams, bishops, uh, I don't know, um, escort agencies. I'm talking about Ford escorts, obviously. Uh, just to pass the word around. We don't care. Uh, you know, uh, another pair of ears is another listener. They could even give us half a ear, not, not, uh, not even their full attention. Uh, we'd appreciate it and love you for it. So uh, get the word out there. And uh, if you could give us a nice, juicy, multiple star rating on Apple uh, podcast. I always want to say Apple iTunes podcast. Rearrange those words as ever. Um, just get the message out there as well. And if you will put something in writing, hopefully flattering and not too uh, four lettered and asterisked, that would be appreciated too. Thank you. Uh, if you want to have a listen, then uh, Spreaker is uh, our preferred uh, outlet, although we're on all the others as well. Uh, that's S P R E A K E R, Spreaker.com. And uh, just put in Comedy Slab and you'll find us there. Can I just quick shout out to a guy called Johnny Knowles who sent me a note this week? Uh, he reached out mm. on. Uh, <laughs> listen to me. He, I sound very like cor- a DJ. I sound very corporate, don't I? Uh, he reached out on LinkedIn, mate. <laughs> uh, and uh, I thought. Oh, well, how sexy. I thought, hello, here's another nutter. What were we going to do? <laughs> and uh, he, he, he sent me a note. I didn't He's, even know we were on LinkedIn. I have to add that to my anti-social media list. No, I, I'm on LinkedIn. Oh, is it your, you? Oh, okay. yeah, and, but I always... Uh, you do, because you've, you've you liked do. it when I put the Comedy Slab thing up. I say I like it, but what, do I really like you it? You're going to go on once But I'm on think. LinkedIn. He didn't reach out to me. I'm going to get very envious, jealous. He uh, he just he just said he, how much he liked the uh, the podcast. And I said, oh, it's really nice of you to say. Thank you. He said, I listened to your podcast this morning. He said, it, it was uh, it was pretty funny. He said, I enjoyed the segment. You can This is getting his level, really. He said, I enjoyed the segment in your latest episode episode about djs playing long songs to go for a poo um so uh, we, we, <laughs> that was one of my favorites actually of all the shows we've done we've, that was a high point culturally it was really yeah we've uh, so we've we found a level for johnny anyway now, the interesting <laughs> thing is i'm gonna have a look at uh, his the links he sent his uh, sent some links he's he's um he's a podcast animator Whatever the hell that is. Oh, not... uh, we should we should uh, see if we can demonstrate his wares, madam. Yeah. So um, with so us, I mean, I'll send you the links. Yeah, could anyway. he could he make you into a sort of blonde Adonis with uh, pex appeal? I, 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 he's an illustrator, not a magician. What's the matter with you? <laughs> um, Illustrators are magicians. Shows how much you know. That is true. That is true. Have I've you seen it though? They, they, when they first animated the. Um, in the very early days of audio podcasts, they animated the Ricky Gervais podcast. Well, that was one of the big hits. They still do, don't they? Don't they still animate? Well, they probably do, but it was the first time I saw animation. And I thought it was very inventively done. It was very nice. Clever. It kind of took you into a, a third dimension. Yeah. I'll, anyway, I'll, if I get the chance, I'll tweet these out as well so you can have a look at, uh, at Johnny Knowles' work, filmmaker, animator, and editor. So anyway, Johnny, mm. thanks for getting in touch. Really nice and uh, nice for you. It did say nice to kind of makes your day, didn't it, with somebody, whether they mean it or not. 
Yes. <laughs> it's great when they write it. It's to can't, believe they. You can't tell whether they mean it or not, can you then? You think, oh, I do that. Do you think he just wants us to talk about his animation business and uh, we've, been, we've been hoodwinked? Well, yeah, yeah. I never thought of it like that. But now you mentioned it, it's ruined my day, <laughs> yeah. actually, that has now. So it's kind of the reverse effect. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah. Sorry okay. about that. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to uh, don the lycra and get on my electric scooter and be chased by uh, <laughs> Joanna Lumley, with a bit of luck. <laughs> <laughs> How's your evening going to pan out? Well, I just isn't it interesting how and and you know I should mention this to Alison how all of a sudden when <laughs> Joanna Lumley's on the horizon you you're whacking on the lycra but when she's about it's the wincy <laughs> pajamas. <laughs> oh, you've rumbled me, good and proper. Could you just do those buttons up as well, please? That's where I hang out. <laughs> 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 